So I want you to look with me in Psalm 23. And it is a familiar passage of Scripture, I know. Uh, probably by all here in the church this morning. If you'll notice the psalmist David said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. You know, sometimes the Lord just has to make us kind of take a rest. He says, He leadeth me beside the still waters. Praise God, let me say, He knows where we're going even when we don't. <laughs> he says, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. May I say, He always leads us in the right way. Leads us in the right path. Say, why does he do that, preacher? He does it for his name's sake. And you mark it down. It always be for his glory and for mine and your good. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, just to be honest with you on this Sunday morning, life in and of itself is really not always a bed of roses, is it? No. It says, I will fear no evil. In which, in all honesty, it's easier to say that sometimes than to do it, isn't it? said, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He said, Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You know, I believe the Lord just sometimes just spreads His blessings on you and I just so He can rub it in the face of the enemy. Say amen right there. I'm glad God's a, a blessing God. He's in the blessing business, friend. I'm glad He is this morning. He says, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. You know, sometimes God just pours it out, doesn't He? Pours it out and pours it on us. Boy, I like it when He does. He says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Over the years of my life, I preached several messages from this chapter here in Psalm 23. But it never ceases to amaze me what the psalmist David says in verse number 4. He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley. In reality, what David is saying on this Sunday morning is that this valley is for me. That's what I want to preach about, the Lord being my helper for just a few minutes this morning. On this valley is for me, or the ministry of the valley. I thought about this when David is saying this valley is for me. In reality, he's saying that it's become personal to me. You know, wrestling with and going through the valleys in life is something that we all got to face at some time or another. Now listen, you can count on it. If you miss everything I say this morning, please don't miss this. You can count on it that valleys in life are a definite probability. If you haven't gone through one, I promise you this, you stay in this thing long enough, you live for God, you serve God long enough, and you'll find yourself facing valleys. It's inevitable. Valleys we find are definite probability. But notice something else about the valley. I also find that valleys have a distinct purpose in life. God takes us through those valleys for a reason. He takes us through those valleys for a purpose. And in every valley, I promise you this, you'll discover a divine presence. Somewhere standing in the shadows, if you'll look, you'll find Him. He's there. He's always there. He made you and I promise that are saved this Sunday morning. He said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. So he's always there for you and I in the midst of our valleys. Valleys come, by the way, in all shapes and sizes. I thought some people struggle with emotional valleys. Feel like they have, you know, no purpose in life. And sometimes that really happens. A lot of times as we get older, we kind of feel like, and God won't use us anymore. We feel like God maybe uh, can't do anything with us and we're no good to anybody. And I promise you, when you get in that frame of mind, when you get in that kind of shape, when you feel like that, that's not a good way to feel. That's not a good thing to experience. But it happens in life. Sometimes in valleys also may come through family issues. They may come through financial struggle. 
or problems in life and problems with friends, but no matter what they, how they come, one thing for sure and for certain that you and I all have in common this morning is the fact that a lot of time we'll find a valley experience enters into our life out of nowhere. When we least expect it, uh, something happens and something takes place. Listen, I thought about there's some people this morning, you'll find that everything's going good in their life. I mean, all the bills are paid, there's no issues with their family, uh, everything's good with, in their marriage, and they're not fighting any kind of sickness, they're not going through any kind of difficulty or dealing with sorrow, uh, and they're serving God to the best of their ability. Uh, but I told you this to tell you, I told you that to tell you this. They too go through valleys. They too experience things in their life. You see, the valleys of life are not always triggered by what's going on in the present. And sometimes a valley can come and be triggered by what's taken place in the past. Now, I told you that, I'll tell you this. To be honest with you, David had a, already experienced many valleys before he got to Psalm 23. But it didn't matter to David if it was a past valley or a present valley, Pastor. It didn't matter. David had come to this conclusion. Brother Bob, he had decided that every valley was personal just for him. <laughs> we don't relish in valleys. I mean, to be honest with you, we kind of dread them when they come. But I'll be honest with you, if we will kind of look at it and the way David looks at it, you'll find that valley experiences in our life are really good sometimes. And they really help us. And they really get us closer to God. I'll be honest with you, uh, Brother Michael, we'll call on God many times uh, when we're in a valley and forget all about Him when we're on the mountain. I want to tell you right now, God's the God of the mountain, and thank God He's the God of the valley this morning. I thought in those valleys He found provision and purpose, and what it did, it behooved David to get closer and closer and closer to God. I'll be honest with you, a valley can be good if it gets you and I closer to God. I want you to notice something here this morning. In the first three verses of this psalm, it appears that David has everything going his way. Everything's going just right for him. Matter of fact, in verse 1, you'll find he's rejoicing in his shepherd. Well, that's a good one to rejoice in, isn't it? In verse 2, you'll find he's resting in his surroundings. I mean, everything's good. Also in verse 2, he's been refreshed by his spirit. Then in verse 3, he's been restored in his soul. But I tell us what we're here for this weekend. Revival is a restoration of things in our life. Revival comes to you and I to help us to move forward and to get back to where we ought to be and go beyond what we once were. I want to tell you on this Sunday morning, Brother Doug, I believe God is a God of the valley. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we see also in verse 3, he experienced a redirection of his steps. But then notice this. In three short verses, David goes from a time of triumph in his life to a valley of trial. You say, preacher, what did David find in his valley that helped him get closer to God in such a difficult time? Well, I want you to notice with me this morning, first of all, you'll find David had an encounter with the Almighty in his valley. Look with me in verse 4. He said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I'm going to tell you a great encounter if you're in the valley. The greatest encounter you and I will ever have in life is to encounter the Almighty in the midst of our valleys. That's what He wants you and I to do. I tell you, instead of getting in our valley and getting so down and out and defeated in our valleys, if we would go looking for the Master, if we would go searching for Him, if we would seek His, His presence in the valley, I promise you, as David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for Thou art with me. I thought about this. And a lot of times in, in valleys of life, we don't really 
think back to what God's done for us in those valleys. I remember Brother Allen, Aaron when I went through the valley of salvation. I was a lost man on my way to hell one years ago. I was in a bad valley. I was in a dark valley. I was in a deep valley. But guess what? In the midst of my valley, there he come. Yeah. Leaping over the mountain and skipping over the hills. Yeah. Sat right down beside me at High Point Baptist Church where my great papa started and pastored that church for many a year. And guess what? He took me out of the valley yeah. of a trial and a heartache and set me in the midst of heavenly places. Yeah. Saved my never dying soul. Changed my life. Yeah. A valley of salvation. I thought about the times when I went through valleys of, of just heartache and a, a valley when my daddy took his life that was a hard time that was a difficult time I mean you have no closure when something like that happens in your family you just learn to deal with it you say preacher how do you deal with it well you have an encounter with the almighty in the midst of your difficulty and God settles you and God helps you and God strengthens you and God gives you what you need in the midst of your valleys I thought about that time, the valley, back with the church I used to pastor, uh, when we had such a calamity there, and such heartache uh, filled our soul, and we saw things happen that broke our hearts in pieces, and we saw people get up and leave, and, and it really tore at us, Brother Doug. I mean, it was really a hurtful time. It was really a painful time, especially for my dear wife. Oh, but you know what? One day, praise God, there it come. Just, you can count on him. I can get down here and preach a little bit, can't I? I got a little preach coming on, I do believe. And there he come, a leaping over those mountains again, skipping over those hills again. Come right to where we were and give us what we need to stay on the firing line. I want to tell you, I'm glad I stayed with the stuff. I'm glad I stood with God. And I found strength and I found power and I found the might that I need to keep on keeping on and to continue in the way that God had called me and put me on the path that settled my way. Oh, he's a great God, isn't he? I thought about that time I had a valley when it came to serving God. Now, I don't know about some of you preachers, but I had a dear pastor back home at that time when God began dealing with me about preaching. And I went to him and I said, Pastor, I said, how do I know God's called me to preach? And boy, he gave me some good advice. You know what he said? He said, do everything you can possibly do outside of preaching and see how that goes. And at the end of everything, if you're still not settled, if you're still troubled on the inside, you just might as well go ahead and throw the towel in. Well, guess what? Just like a, a, a woman having a child. I went nine months of battling that thing. In my, I mean, really, a dealing with God, a dealing with me day in and day out. And boy, I was trying to get out of it. I was already a deacon in the church, a Sunday school teacher in the church. I was going on visitation. I was preaching in the prisons. I was preaching on the radio. I, or not preaching, I was bootlegging. Let me back up. I was bootlegging. I don't know what some of you don't, and that's good. I was, I was bootlegging the gospel. I was, this, I was a lay speaker. How's that? The right terminology. I was a lay speaker. And then all of a sudden, I was outside mowing my yard on a riding lawnmower. And there he come, leaping over them mountains again, skipping over those hills again, and settled that in the gable into my soul. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying an encounter with God in the midst of your valley will change your situation and change your life. You say, well, preacher, I've been in a valley, and I've encountered God, but my situation is the same. Well, I want to ask you, are you the same? Wow. See, sometimes God changes us. He may leave, leave everything just like it is. Well, I'll tell you right now, I wouldn't be standing here today if God had not helped me through some years of ministry and some years in my Christian life. I wouldn't be standing here today preaching the Word of God. But you know what? I found out He is altogether lovely. Yeah. He is the King of kings. And he is the Lord of lords. And, and He is right for whatever may be wrong yeah. in mind in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We see here this morning, not only did David 
have an encounter with the Almighty in his valley. But you'll also find that David experienced an anointing in his valley. Don't let that word anointing scare you now. Use that terminology around a lot of Baptists and they get real jittery. You need them Xanax or something. Some of you act like you don't know what that is. Some of you may not, thank God. But here, look in verse 5. He said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over that phrase I anointed my head with oil literally carries the thought of experiencing God's touch and God's power we know oil in the Bible in typology is a type of the Holy Ghost you know what it takes in your valley just one touch just one touch is all it takes. Let me ask you, have you ever got down to that place in your, in your valley experience where you just didn't feel like you could make it another step? Like you couldn't go another mile? Like, my Lord, I can't, I can't have another day. I'm just going to get out of this thing and turn and walk away and go back to the old life. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, there ain't nothing to go back to. <laughs> oh, there ain't nothing in the love, old life to go back to. Oh, but there's been times, I'm sure if we'd be honest on this Sunday morning, we felt like just giving up and throwing in the towel and walking away. Sister, I know you had to. You admitted that. You said it. You tested But guess why? Guess why you're sitting here this morning? Guess why? Because somebody, the Lord Jesus touched you. That's why you're here. She felt a touch from another world. Oh, I tell you, there's some of you sitting here on this Sunday morning. You'd be out there doing your thing. You'd be out there living that old life. But thank God for that touch. Hey, what about that touch, Brother Bob? It'll help you keep on keeping normal. That touch, Brother Doug, it'll change your situation. it change your life. All it takes is a touch. A touch in a time of sorrow. A touch in a time of sickness. A touch in a day of adversity. A touch in a time of trouble. A touch in calamity. A touch when you feel like everything is against you and everybody has turned their back on you. All it takes, Brother Donald Trump, is another touch. Just a touch of God. Just one touch. David said, Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Amen. Just a touch. Amen. That's all it takes. Is a touch. You say, preacher, are you on a touch this morning? I reckon I am. A touch will change you. A touch will help you. A touch of God will make you keep in the battle and stay in the fight. Brother Thad, you know, you and Miss Tammy know what that touch is. Dr. Phil, you know what that touch is all about. David said, Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. I tell you what God has done, Brother Doug, Pastor Doug, in the midst of our valleys before. He's just dumped those blessings out on us. Said, Lord, I don't know if I can take much more. And he pours more out. Hey, I'm like Sister Annette. It's not the material things of life. It's those spiritual blessings of gathering together. Hey, I tell you what, I woke up this morning and praise God. I, tell, I told Brother Doug, I was excited about the, about the service this morning. I was excited about what God was going to do. You say, why, preacher? Because I felt a touch. You know what? I get to preach this morning. I thought, my Lord, I don't have to preach. I get to preach. Lord, what a blessing. Watch this, and I'm done. We see here, not only did David have an encounter with the Almighty, not only did David experience an anointing in his valley, but last of all, notice with me, David became enlightened in the aftermath of his valley. What do you mean, preacher? Look with me. Verse number 6. David's done been through the valley of the shadow of death. The Lord's anointed him, strengthened him, touched him. His presence was there for him. He was there for him. The Lord didn't let him down. 
Hey, in his midst of all he was facing and all that he had went through and all that he was going to go through in the days. Oh, and by the way, did I tell you? That wasn't the first time David ever felt that touch. I'm backing up. Y'all put her in reverse. Lock her down on that second point one more time. David felt that touch in the valley of Elah. When he was facing that nine foot, nine inch giant. And by the name of Goliath. Oh yeah. He had five brothers, or had four brothers, and he went down and got five stones. He's going to take care of every one of them if he had to. But all it took was one touch. And when he slung that stone suck it right in the midst of old Goliath's head and dropped him dead in his tracks. He knew what that touch was. He knew what that touch was, praise God, when Absalom tried to take his throne, tried to overthrow him. Hey, you know what? It kept him going, Miss Sidney. It kept him running well in the midst of his valley. But now watch this. David was enlightened in the aftermath. Look what he says in verse 6. He's done been through that valley now. He's done faced a great trial. Many trials, many heartaches before we ever eat the Psalm 23. But notice what he said in verse 6. He says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now listen to me. You always remember this. God sent two sheepdogs to your rescue on the day you got saved to go with you. You say, what are those sheepdogs? One of them's named Goodness. The other one's named Mercy. You know, David was a shepherd, so I'm using shepherd terminology. Sheepdogs. Everywhere he went, when the times got rough, he'd look around. There's old Goodness. He'd rub him on the head. Say, hello, goodness. I need you. You know what goodness really is? Goodness is also grace. Yeah. See, sometimes we need grace, Miss Joyce. Yeah. Sometimes we just need grace to show up, a brother Christian, in the midst of our valley. And that gives us the strength. That gives us the, the might that we need to keep on in the midst of our trial. But then sometimes, you know, I look around, there was mercy. Hello, yeah. mercy. Yeah. Rubbing mercy on the head. Boy, I sure am glad God's a merciful God. Yeah. See, there was a time when David needed mercy. Yeah, right. God didn't give him what he could have got. Right. I mean, God didn't let it slide, but God didn't give him what he could have got. Right. I mean, he had a man murdered. He was an accessory to murder. Right. He, he committed adultery right. with another man's wife. Right. Hey, but God let him live. He was a man after God's own heart, right. but he was just flesh and bone like you and I are. He made mistakes. He messed up. He sinned sometimes. But one thing David did not do, he did not get bogged down in his valley. He came out of his valley with goodness and mercy right behind him. Right behind him. I didn't even know I could do that. I just done it. Right behind him. Every step of the way. Oh, David be walking down the road just about to mess up again. All of a sudden, there come mercy. <laughs> oh, David said, I've heard that voice before. Yes. And mercy would help him. Mercy would be there for him. And then there was just sometimes he needed grace. Yeah. Yeah. That grace for every trial. Yeah. That grace for every heartache. Yeah. You know what keeps you going on in the day of battle? Brother Jordan, it's grace. When everything you think's against you, Brother Greg, what keeps us going is grace. Grace, hey, if we got what we deserved, I'd be in hell this morning. If every one of us got what we deserved, our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. All but God's grace and God's mercy. David got enlightened in the aftermath. He experienced God's anointing. He had an encounter with the Almighty. David, tell us. Tell us about that valley one more time, David. I can hear him say that valley was for me. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.